Hi, I'm Brett Littman, director of the Osama Noguchi Foundation and Garden Museum. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the 2021 Osama Noguchi Award recipients, artist Shio Kusaka and architect Toshiko Morey. Now in its eighth year, the Osama Noguchi Award was created to recognize exceptional individuals whose practices share a thoughtfulness and boundary transcending points of view found in Osama Noguchi's work and extend his ideals into our own times. We are honored this year to present the award to Shio and Toshiko. Even though they work in different mediums, Shio in ceramics and Toshiko in architecture, they both share a profound sensitivity to nature, playfulness and clear-minded approaches to materials and function, and quiet reflectiveness, which carry forward and extend Noguchi's own aesthetic principles. We are thrilled to be honoring them in person at our annual benefit on October 5th, and are delighted to present this program to our supporters and friends who could not join us that evening. I hope you will enjoy these tributes to our honorees and their conversation with our trustee, Kulapat Yantrasest. Thank you for being part of our community, and I hope you will join me in congratulating the 2021 Osama Noguchi Award honorees, Shio Kusaka and Toshiko Mori. One of the things that I find amazing about Shio's work is the way that what seems to be very simple and at times irregular is actually a masterful hand. There is a kind of poetry to that, and it's a tactile poetry. It's a poetry with the hand and with the eye that uh, connects to a vessel which is something that is the most ancient and the most human form of making. They are functional objects, but they are also objects that exist in the world as autonomous objects. So when we worked with her on our project at the Neutra VDL house here in Los Angeles, um, one of the most wonderful things about it was the connection that she made to the house, which is also a very sculptural house, very much a house for living and for life. And her vessels, she very much wanted them, some of them filled. There was a plant in one, um, you know, she put things in the kitchen as if they were used objects. And she really populated the house with these works as if they were being lived with and used. There's a real joy in the work that is about life. The playfulness of the objects, the, the life in them. Her use of her children's drawings incised on the sides of them. She really incorporates her whole life into it. So there's the idea of utility and the idea of beautiful form and the other that, that goes together and they're inseparable for her. When you talk about Noguchi and his moving back and forth between the world of sculpture and the world of functional design, that is something that I think, uh, you know, clearly defines what she has been doing since the beginning of her career. Making objects that can be both functional and art objects. Toshiko Mori's work stands out in the world of architecture because it is so ideally suited to its purposes. When her desire is to have a lean geometric structure, she achieves it with great elegance and a true minimalism. When her need is to have something more organic, she's equally at home with it. It shows a tremendous ability to adapt to situations and to keep creativity an ongoing process. Toshika doesn't have a signature move. She has an intelligent response to, to the program and to the challenge. We built our house in upstate New York with her um, 20 years ago. And it's just a constant source of pleasure and wonder uh, and refuge for us. It's a very restorative 
place to live. Uh, and I think Toshiko has a certain genius for space and atmosphere and tone. I lived for almost a month in one of Toshiko Mori's buildings, Thread, her artist residency in the Senegalese village of Sintian. And I have to say that its forms never failed to impart a feeling of really, really good cheer. You discover that it functions beautifully, it stays cool in hot weather, and outside it gives fantastic views of the sky as marvelous at night as it is during the day. She's a very patient person, and as I think Noguchi was. A bit like water working on stone over a long period of time. The work is quietly cumulative and it's becoming better and better and richer and richer. But at the end of the day, she knows that architecture is an envelope. It's a comfortable environment that we inhabit. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you Toshiko and Chio to join us. First of all, this is such an exciting year that both of you to be honored with this award. I mean, it's so such an important year and I'm so honored to have known both of you and be able to really have this conversation. Well, let's start first with the award. Um, this is award that is quite special because it really is a award with who artists who share Nokuji spirit in the global consciousness and commitment to the Eastern and Western cultural exchange. And there's no one I can imagine that have practiced that spirit more than both of you. I think both of you, interestingly, you know, were born in Japan, come to the US, one in East Coast and one in West, uh, and, and, and West Coast, and then study and also practiced uh, uh, substantially within, within the country. Well, maybe I can start with Toshio. I know you so many years and you not only practice you know, art of architecture, but you have been writing and teaching the art of architecture for so many years. And in your writing, which I really admire, you talk quite a bit about the hybridity of you know, Eastern in Japanese or the US, and you know, this global consciousness of how culture comes together. So how has this hybridity influenced you in your practice and your thinking? Well, thank you, Clapat. And first of all, I'm uh, beyond honored to be receiving this award with, and also with Shio, whose work I admire greatly and to be in conversation with Clapat. This idea of hybridity, especially in context of Isamu Noguchi is very interesting one because of he is of a diverse heritage and also nationalities. Um, he had to bridge the gap, not only the gap, but also a really treacherous path in Trump's like uh, right after World War II when I, do remember that he has regretted for a long time not to be able to do Hiroshima Peace Memorial, for example, because he was a citizen of enemy nation at that time. Um, so in terms of hybridity, I would probably like to, how do I say, theorize it more as a multiple identities. And uh, identity of Japan has changed so much. And also identity of the United States changes quite rapidly, the way people perceive what it was like last year as opposed to this year is really different. So we have to adopt to diverse perception of our identity and to be able to um, constantly bridge the gap and communicate and to be able to have empathy. I think empathy is what Isamu had for so many different people, many different cultures and to be able to communicate and engage and honor different cultures uh, that we bring forth all together. I think that's actually the importance of it. So it's just not a hybridity between US and Japan, 
but because we are, all of us are in fact global citizens that is beyond the national identity, the way or we all practice and work. Well, thank you. That's so clear. And I'm so glad you brought up the concept of empathy, which is something that I can see so much in your work, you know, and not only just through your practice, but your teaching and your influence on your students who are now, you know, professionals all over the world that learn from someone who has not only this, the expertise, but also the empathy that allow architecture to carry that uh, spirit to the users and to society that they belong to. So that's really wonderful. So Shio, uh, long time no see. Uh, so glad. I mean, for, I, I have such a, a great admiration for you, even though you're much older, younger than me. Uh, the idea that you really, you know, of course, work mostly with ceramic, which is could be seen as somewhat a traditional master kind of craft from Japan and many uh, cultures around the world. But the way you approach it brings such a fresh kind of take on what is a classic rather, uh, you know, eternal uh, art form, which is that part. So, you know, similar question, what do you think about this global consciousness and how the hybrid, you know, again, in, in the spirit of Nokuji that uh, Toshiko mentioned, the empathy, the understanding, the being between countries, between cultures at the same time, belong to everything and nothing? Um, whatever I make, it's more about that an outcome. The hybrid is an outcome and then it's not like blending a little bit of here of this a little bit of that and then like mix it up and then become something else it's not the way i see it is like whatever i do becomes the mixture because i lived in japan and i lived here and um just the whole experience like i traveled and then it just comes to it and so i don't really i am not too aware when I'm actually in my studio, but the, the daily, like the ceramics, like the daily use of ceramics in Japan, like you touch, you hold the vessels when you eat and you touch different materials like chopsticks and um, like the bowls, like wood and then ceramics, glass, and you hold it. And then they are all different sort of like textures and materials and then you just build the relationship like in your own way and then there are so many colors and then, and then here you have a little bit more distance and then like you actually don't lift it and then you have this distance with it and then you look at them and then they're more organized and they're set so like the idea of sets are very different and then you just build these um um, different relationship and then I think those things just are more symmetrical and then organized and um, of course like there are not organized things here and then there are organized things in Japan too like they are they are always different like um, approaches but in general like I think those just comes together and um, as an artist I think in, for me personally it's kind of important not to think about it <laughs> and then but the, it, it becomes that like at the end well that's wonderful i think i'm i'm so you know I, when you think about the space you know how you're the the the, the ma as we call it in japan right how you have your your distance between you and the work or relationships and all of that that's very special uh, and make me think a lot about you know your work in context of you know japanese architecture and art as well one subject that always come up you know when i look at your work uh, both of your works are materials. You, you talk substantially, both of you, about material, materiality, immateriality, how your know, material in a way is a representative of culture, geography, climate, and things come, you talked about, you know, so the earth or the wood and how it relates to, to ourselves. And I wonder, you know, material, and of course, you, you, both, you all work globally. You work, of course, based in the US but have worked in all over many continents of the world. How those elements affect you? So in architecture, we are architects, but we always have to work with people who will be living or using in it. And we work with a specific culture 
And material is the manifestation of culture and civilization. And it carries with it long history. And many people have attachment of two certain type of materiality, which can engage them. So that I try not to impose my architecture, but then read the culture through the use of materials quite a lot. So I think that's actually a very interesting idea of reading it because I, I think you asked the question later, but I did work with uh, for Isamu and he will observe a stone and he would observe a, its own culture, where the stone is coming from, what the spirits is containing in it. Uh, so he would work in dialogue with actual material itself, which is ancient, primitive, but incredibly contemporary because uh, materials for him had spirits. And in architecture, it's less of that because it's everything is artificially constructed artifact. But within it, uh, the construct is part of civilization material language is essential to understanding and engaging with culture. That's how I interpret with it, so. And she also came on a question to you, how do you really, the nuance between the different clay, different expression that you can cut from, you know, again, not just material, but like what uh, Toshiko mentioned, material is the manifestation of culture, of climate, of sense of place, or even time, right? How do you see this into your work? Um, the different clay does different things. And um, I didn't know until you, uh, I touched them. And then, but once mm -hmm. you touch them, and then once you start making things, um, you realize they have their certain tendencies. And then my goal, like I do want to get better, but I don't want to lose touch. And if we, I stay with one clay and then doing things over and over, it, I just get better at certain techniques. And then I sometimes mm -hmm. feel confused that, oh, shoot, I got better. And then when I get confused, <laughs> I switch clay. And then I kind of become like a little bit more like a beginner feeling like, oh, OK, what do you do? And then like I do the same like movement, but the clay reacts different. And then I get this different vibe. And then so I, and then I get used to that clay and then I move to the different clay and then I keep moving and then moving and moving. And then it does have a memory. Um, so I tend to use the clay that I not too comfortable because that's where I really enjoy making things. Um, that's like, so I think I'm depending on a lot of like touches. That's very interesting. I'm so glad to hear because, of course, you know, we architects are always jealous with artists because you can make things with your own hand. So, again, maybe started with, with Toshiko. I know that you, uh, at Harvard, you, you, you teach substantially about this aspect of making, of functionality of architecture, but you also have a very clear aesthetic. You have a very clear statement in your work. So how do you balance it to both of the, both of these elements of your work come through? Um, so in a way, it's actually very interesting because the idea of making, as you mentioned, is very different from artist work, from architect's work, because architects, we need a big team. And it goes through so many different hands. And the team have to collaborate, understanding what we are making. So it's a challenge but it's all, always a joy because we share so many visions in common. And then that we will translate from my concept into actual materiality structure. And then it has to eventually communicate to the user group and people who are occupied to make it functional. And then in a way that we as architects, all we do is dream and we will think about it to hoping it's going to be come out the way we want it to be used. So there's a lot of uh, will, will and a lot of wishes and a lot of dreaming with many different people to make this a realization. So our work is materials, but essentially what we actually do is make people's dreams come to reality. And then we are just a servants in that process. And that's how I see it, our role. 
in terms of functionality and materiality, those are just tools. But what we do is to make people's dream come true. Shio, most of your work have function, but some of the pieces do not. Right, so how do you reconcile that? I mean, how do you make decision? Okay, this is a vessel. It has a connection to people through its usage, but this is not, this is an object that have a different relationship to people. How do you, you know, make that kind of decisions about functionality and aesthetic statement? I think most of my works are pot. I don't know what, the, um, and then when it's, um, I think I used to care about the functionality a lot more in the beginning because I really wanted to um, bring this small pot that you can hold into a big gallery space as if it belongs there. And then I really wanted to um, challenge that. And then that was like, I used to care that a lot and then I thought of like being functional and then like no matter what it was I wanted to put the glaze inside to hold the water and or hold the plant so that it works as a planter like I thought that was really important for me to stick with and then put the limitation around my work like okay this is unless it's like a figurines that's also a different part of my work but um I cared that a lot and then um, now, clay is in a lot of places and it's not really about the functionality. And then um, I am actually freer than that. And then I would just decide when it's done based on what it looks like. And then if it, look, it looks great, it feels great, um, I might not care about the functionality of my work too much. And but if it meant to be functional and if it's meant to be used, I do care about um, how it functions and it should work well for, to serve that purpose because um, I really don't like things that doesn't work well when it's meant to be used and it just looks cool but doesn't work well. I don't like that. So I do care about that. It really helps my practice to stick with one thing. And then I can use a different material, but I'm not, I, I think I'm not really confident about putting things together in general. I'm not really curious about that yet. And um, the, the only thing I have, I am curious is how to present it. And then like what kind of things that I can present on or like in that space. And then that's, I, that's something I'm interested, but not, I can't even like put like a different kind of handle on my pot yet. <laughs> like I, I'm not there yet. Maybe I will someday. Yeah, well, one thing, uh, which is a rare opportunity, you know, not all of our honorees, actually a few of honorees actually have direct relationship or, you know, knowledge of uh, Isamu Noguchi. In this case, Toshio, I mean, when you were at Cooper Union, uh, you actually interned with him at that time. And of course, uh, this, uh, you know, is a big part of your thinking and your influence as well. Could you share some stories that we can learn from that experience and how, you know, reflect on that relationship and, and, and you know, internship? Yeah. So uh, he was an amazing person to work as an intern. I was very, very lucky. And I just have to also mention Shoji Sagao, who was in the studio, who was at infinite tolerance for ignorance and, uh, incapable <laughs> interns and he would guide us through this and without him I think we'll be hopeless but we I was able to go to uh, the Trito grads for him to make a metal models or help him draw up and as you know at that time he and uh, Bucky Fuller had a collaboration called Noguchi Fountain in Plaza Inc and then to draw public plaza project and then also to have you know, looking at the stones, which is studio is right there. And uh, to just observe how he works, interact with different people was uh, quite an amazing idea. And, and then uh, everybody who works there, 
because it's Long Island City, there's no place to go out or take lunch out. We were required to uh, do a lunch. So we take turns and if, if it's your turn, you have to bring all your food and you cook lunch and he will bring sometimes clients, friends, museum directors and curators and you just say how many and then you cook lunch. And he always wanted me to cook him Japanese lunch. And <laughs> And it was, it's actually makes a convivial. And we're all included, all the interns are included in this conversation. And we were able to come across these incredible luminaries. And then we had long lunch every day. So that's actually a fun memories. And I learned uh, a lot uh, just being there, observing and absorbing the atmosphere and the way he does conduct himself and working and running around and looking at materials and all these small things I learned so much. Wow, that's such a, I mean, the osmosis is such a wonderful aspect of it. And I, I know, I mean, it's, of course, brought me back to Japan with the whole disciple system where you actually not just work, but you live and you breathe and you think together. And by osmosis, you really get to, you know, there's nothing that can be taught. Everything has to be observed and osmosis by itself. Well, you know, both of you have great success in every, every aspect of the way I have received so many awards and accolades, you know. So my question is, how could this award, the Noguji Award, be, you know, good example, good influence to you? What can it do that will, you know, of course it is a great honor, but uh, what specific meanings that this award will have for you? Um, this, I think the Summer Noguji Award is like represent the idea of, um, like some kind of like a new abstract idea of home. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I think categorizing, like labeling, tagging, like those things are really great tools to organize things. And then I love organization. I like organize, organize the situation, but um, like Noguchi's award really represents beyond that. And then, um, just like not labeled, not categorized and beyond the nationality, beyond disciplines. Like, it, like that's exactly what we just talked about today. And it's just, it covers everything and it really um, inclusive. And um, it just felt amazing to be included in this and then I felt like oh I belong here and mm -hmm. it's <laughs> like it just felt like a, a different kind of home that I belong and that felt very special to me and now I feel a little this responsible about it and then I'm really honored like I thought um I was just starting and then being recognized like this at this point is um, very strange and special feeling. And now I'm gonna go with just a little bit of responsibility and um, <laughs> think about the other people maybe. <laughs> and that's how I feel about this award. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Toshio, anything to, to share with us? Well, for me, it was, as, as I mentioned, I was an intern and I really looked at him as the master, one of the most amazing masters I have ever met. And I learned so much as a cravat sales, as a small sales. So it's somebody who's very far away from me. It's somebody I always look up to and I keep thinking, what would he think about it? He, he's such a strong mind, he's determined all the time and then really real, he had a strong will, and then incredible empathy and generosity at the same time. And then he had this huge vision and it's somebody who is like beyond my reach. So when I heard that I received this, so I was like, me? And I go, what? So I think back in days when I was a young intern and holding his model and I, how, 
can I be related to him in this way? So it, it was beyond honor. It was such a, nearly a shock. So he has eyes, like a blue eyes. And if you look at his eyes, you see infinity in his eyes. It is infinity into ancient world and infinity into the future. And I always remember that. It's something I just remember what his eyes look like. So I, re so I was think about that in terms of this award that, yeah, I think future, I have to think about his eyes, reaching into an ancient world and reaching into a future. So in a strange way, like Shio, I felt like I was welcome back to home in a very different way. So it was really touching for me. And thank you so much for this honor. It means incredible for me personally. Well, thank you both of you. I think this is, uh, in such a short time, I'm so appreciative that you share so many thoughts and values and stories that even though I know you as friends, it, 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 I, I left with such a full heart of things I need to think about. So thank you for your time today and um, can, uh, can hardly wait to celebrate you on October 5th when we will be together in person soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.